So the aesthetics of code, I think, are fascinating because uh, our code, I think, has reflected the organizations that built it in the past. And so you end up with very strictly structured hierarchies of code calling these things, like you do the game update and the render update. And in the context of a game team, you can see exactly how their game teams were structured just by looking at the code. And so in, this, in a way, the, uh, the aesthetic of the software is just as a way to, to reflect how the team is structured. So the way we like to think about it at Creative AI, and I, I certainly enjoy thinking about it, is as patterns. And these patterns are something that started to pick up in the games uh, community and the software in general, uh, software development patterns. Um, but these are, uh, we're right at the infancy of that. We just have a few standard things which help you work around limitations in programming languages, but they don't really assemble and combine and uh, you can't stack them up and make some really mind-blowing things quickly. It's less uh, like Lego than it should be. It should be much more playful. So that's the approach that we're trying to take with this, is sort of building this core that is the definition of this Lego set. And then on top of that, we can sort of take uh, uh, individual pieces and quickly plug stuff together. Um, and that's a quality that is also about bringing life to this software. So it can be, things can be assembled just for one particular creative project easily and quickly. And then it's gone. It's the, the, you know, so the ability to create and then just uh, then throw it away once you're done with it it's something that's missing from software. There's a lot of very static, monolithic software that are completely dead um, and that, that do certain things well, but you can't extend them very easily or you can't play with them very easily or make something fun out of them. Um, so that playfulness also comes back at the software side and uh, making things that are easy to combine and to assemble and to have this combinatorial explosion of things that have been contributed by lots of different people through either our team or the community. And this actually does reflect also this aesthetic of the code. When it's more playful, you will see it on the user side. And when the software is completely dead, you can see it. And there's these long menus of things you need to click through, these super big toolbars. Um, these are a sign that the software is not really living with you. <laughs> and uh, that, that this will change. And this is something we're at the very early stages of, but the software that sort of starts to learn and adapt with you will feel extremely differently. And, uh, that's something that we uh, are basically focusing on as a company, specifically in the creative context, because that's how you'll build up your own you know, palette of custom things that, uh, well, these things work well for me and I can, I, can, I can switch this out when I no longer need it. You know, I'm trying to learn a new skill. I'm going to throw this one out and bring something else in. And it's no longer this boring old user interface that's the same wherever you use it on anyone's machine. It's just your environment that's been configured specifically for you and that is there and that you can playfully throw stuff out and bring stuff in.